Welcome to In Studio with Sharna Bobi. This is a series of conversations with artists, curators, and influencers, particularly in, but not limited to the African arts. I named it In Studio, with the studio as a broad term, referring to the artist's working space and the mental space for making and creating. I'm very passionate about how art can stimulate open-minded conversation, and I hope these episodes challenge you to see the world in new ways. Elizabeth of Sutherland and I go back to preschool. It's clear that our friendship was predestined. In fact, our parents studied architecture together in university. So when they got married and had children, we were put in the same preschool and studied together into elementary school. Really, Elizabeth and I were going to be friends whether we liked it or not. Today, Elizabeth is a multi-talented artist who explores performance art and storytelling in her work. With co-founder Emily Pinemang Asiedu, they present a range of traditional Ghanaian stories and new and interesting ways through their platform, Accra Theatre Workshop, or ATW. Elizabeth also recently participated in the 89 Plus Residency, directed by Simon Castes and Hans Ulrich Obrist, who was a recent in-studio guest. What you're about to listen to is a conversation we had in Elizabeth's car after an art exhibition at Nibuke Foundation while I was in Accra. If you're unfamiliar with Elizabeth's work, head on over to our Instagram page at InStudioWithSO for some pictures while you listen. All right, so I'm here with Elizabeth Sutherland. Hello. How do I introduce you? <laughs> How do you introduce you? That's a good question. Yeah, so we were, uh, yeah, so I mean, I think this one, this interview will probably be one of the most, more interesting ones in the sense that um, I know you personally mm-hmm. and the other ones, uh, people that I've met, you know, over time, but we actually grew up together and so it's been interesting to see um, the developments over time in, in terms of your interest in the arts and, and how things have turned up up until now. Yeah. So, let's start from the beginning. Yeah? From the absolute beginning. From the absolute beginning. So, yeah. we'll rewind uh, to the, you know, the start. When did you realize that you were interested in arts? Because you grew up surrounded by arts. Yeah. Of different, you know... Fields. Yeah, my parents are both architects. My grandmother was a writer, playwright, children's activist, um, and my aunts are involved in academics and stuff. Mm-hmm. There was, I, I don't even really think there was like a solid point where it was like this is, you know, I'm interested in art. Mm-hmm. But I've just always, you know, mm-hmm. been a scribbler, I've been a dreamer, I've been into using my hands and my body to mm-hmm. express myself. So I did dance. Um, I did. I used to draw all the time mm-hmm. I, in school. And um, it was when I left secondary school faith that I was like, I need to do something creative because mm-hmm. I'd been doing actually science. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was just not very fun. And I decided I was going to do theatre. And that was... Because it, it, it pulled so many different forms of art into itself. Mm-hmm. It had design in there. It had the directing side. It had the writing side. And I mm-hmm. felt like it really encompassed a lot of the different things that I wanted to do. Yeah, so I think that if, if anything was a clear beginning um, of something, that would that would have been it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that choice to mm-hmm. go to theatre. And so you've recently... We're in, here in Accra, you've recently just come back from a uh, residency in Paris mm-hmm. with the Google... Cultural Institute. Cultural Institute. And 89 Plus. And how did that go? What was that about? So um, 89 Plus was is slightly random. Uh, mm-hmm. It's with... Um, started by Hans Ulrich mm-hmm. Oberst and mm-hmm. Simon Caste, who's uh, the director of the Swiss Institute in London. And they, they kind of call it a long-term research project but basically they were looking they were like we don't know any of the young people Mm -hmm. making things who are born in this age of the internet and Mm -hmm. um the year 1989 when Mm -hmm. so many influential things happened in the world we we want to know what they're up to Mm -hmm. so they kind of reached out a couple years back to um 
almost make this directory of, mm-hmm. of young makers and I was one of the people who met them at the Nubuke Foundation mm-hmm. and from there I did a few things with them but this this came again really randomly uh, email they were like oh we're gonna mm-hmm. ask you to propose something to, mm-hmm. if you if you were to hypothetically go to Google and mm-hmm. do something what would you do and I was like oh, okay but I've been working on this project for almost three years called Anansi's wife Ikea's mm-hmm. daughter looking at um, retelling the Anansi stories, which are a big part of Akan culture from the viewpoint of the character's wife, mm-hmm. Asuo Okonareya, um, just asking, you know, what happens when you redirect mm-hmm. the trickster energy through a male and uh, a female imagination rather mm-hmm. than a male one, which is a question I kind of synthesized through a, a lady called Ricky Stefani Tannen. But yeah, so I was looking at mm-hmm. that as a big thing, but then how to deal with a question that I keep getting asked, which is about documentation in my work. Mm-hmm. I hate videoing live performance because that's really? not the intention. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, it's not meant to be experienced like that. It's not like a film, you mm-hmm. know, that's shot specifically to be viewed on a flat screen. Mm-hmm. It's made in a completely different way for a completely mm-hmm. different purpose. So I was looking at how to use something like augmented reality. Mm-hmm to um, capture moments in performance mm-hmm. that are still, they still feel, you know, 3D mm-hmm. and live and, and, and have more depth than just uh, mm. recording and replaying something on a flat screen. So that was really cool. I, I should have brought the app to show you, but yeah. um, <laughs> you'll have to show uh, me then. I will show you. So at the end of this project, is there going to be an exhibition of what your work? Or? Yes, I'm working with Nana Foyate, mm-hmm. who's a really amazing woman curator here to do a show in April mm-hmm. hopefully so that gets all tied up and I'm, I've got this long performance piece which is going to be done mm-hmm. kind of repetitively in the space uh, but it involves kind of an installation mm-hmm. video uh, video oh. installation where would that be? The it's going to be at the new Anno space in Osu oh, okay, great. in April mm-hmm. and yeah so that's, gonna, that's really exciting and mm-hmm. something that um I'd actually originally envisioned it outside, but it makes sense to do it in a space like that where where um, it's got a, like a pool and the mm-hmm. space is really kind of immersive environment that mm-hmm. I make. And then it's, of, of course, got the storytelling mm-hmm. going on almost continuously. So you said that you don't like to document your performances. Mm-hmm. How then do you... What material then would you use to show let's say, viewers who didn't see the live performance, are they not... What is, tell me more about that concept of... Yeah, of, it's um, something like... So, for instance, and I've, I've always felt almost, like, backwards about mm-hmm. this because so many people are like, no, you're an artist, you have to document, you have to, like... Yeah, exactly, you mm-hmm. have to show people who didn't see it. And the, the, then I heard about Dino Segal, who's mm-hmm. a perform- or situation maker, mm-hmm. and he doesn't document or encourage others to document his work and he passes mm-hmm. it on entirely through the body and through mm-hmm. uh, the mouth you mm-hmm. know and that's crazy to me because you know we, we have this oral history here in this country mm-hmm. this tradition of passing down culture and, and wisdom and identity mm-hmm. through speaking to each other and it's never been important to me and one, I'm thinking now more about, you know, like when it's done a bit more deliberately, you know, in terms mm-hmm. of how it's done. I'm not so against it, but I do feel like it's not meant. Um, we lose so much. We interface so much with screens nowadays mm-hmm. that um, it's OK. Like, it's OK to mess up <laughs> on something mm-hmm. and it's OK to just let it something that's meant to be temporal and transitory slide into the past and not have a record of it. I'm totally fine with that. And so now we're back in Accra, as we all know, and um, you've been working with the Accra Theatre Workshop. Tell me a bit more about, you know, your objectives in setting this up and how participants have been responding to your program. Yeah, ATW is actually going on four years now, um, which is incredible to me. We're going to be five next year. And we're on a bit of a break now, reevaluating. But um, it's been amazing, just generally, um, in terms of the support mm-hmm. from from audience people, audience members, and just people and other artists. But also in terms of um, 
from the actors and all these mm -hmm. really amazing people we've met and had the opportunity to work with. And we started it because myself and Amelia, who's my co-director, because there's a lack of space. Mm -hmm. There's a lack of space for the kind of work we both wanted to do in this country. A lot of people do this very kind of traditional theater. It's comedy, it's, you know, it's funny. People want to laugh, they don't want to think too hard. And we, we like funny too, but you know, sometimes you do want a bit more texture mm -hmm. um, in the material that you're dealing with. You want a bit more nuance, mm -hmm. you know, because we, if you laugh too much about something without, without being critical, mm -hmm. that's not helpful. Um, <clears throat> and you don't have to be critical all the time, but you know, um, just to fill that space with something other than mindless entertainment and mm -hmm. with other viewpoints and other opinions and to give not just ATW but other groups so we, we're working this year a lot with a group called Drama Queens mm -hmm. which started by another friend Anna Kusi Hansen mm -hmm. um, it's like feminist theater group um, mm -hmm. we're really trying to listen more and to what other people also feel like is missing from mm -hmm. this space and provide whatever we can to help them also get their voices out there okay what inspires you everything <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a general question yeah it's it's, it's it's really like people expect you to call up specific things but um I mean it doesn't have to be anything yeah it's it's a, it can be abstract or general yeah no but I, I, I mean it when I say everything I mean mm -hmm. just just life um life God people just the earth like Mm -hmm. There's so much detail in our lives, and we spend, again, we spend so much time. It it hits me how much time we spend, like, on our phones, myself included, just on the internet somewhere else, mm -hmm. and not being present. You miss all this amazing detail that goes into every little part of our lives. Mm -hmm. That's just really incredible to me. I'm taking time to notice mm -hmm. more and more. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what inspires me at the moment, okay. at least. When we were kids, I remember we would read those Enid Blyton books. Oh, dear. And those are my favorite <laughs> books. And we used to, like, you know, share and borrow and, and mm -hmm. like, sometimes fight over, <laughs> over these books. Um, and so, you know, both been very avid readers. Mm -hmm. um, what do you read about now? What, what piques your curiosity? What do I read now? Okay. I have been trying to get through T T J Cole, um, okay. his little essay, short collection, mm -hmm. I say his new one. I think it was a bad first book for me to mm -hmm. start with. But um, reading everything still, I used to read the encyclopedia when I was little, and I mm -hmm. still do random crap like that. I pick mm -hmm. up leaflets and stuff. <laughs> um, but I've been reading a lot of Neil Gaiman. It's a mm -hmm. lot more fantasy stuff nowadays mm -hmm. as well both mm -hmm. reading and watching and then uh, who else am I reading I'm going back to Shakespeare I did a lot of Shakespeare in my undergrad and had left it behind for a while but I'm going back to mm -hmm. it and also a lot more African women writers mm -hmm. um, as well which mm -hmm. is really nice because uh, you need you need those voices so I was reading um, the Kane anthology mm -hmm. and then also short stories by people like Nana Nyaku Poating and all these mm. other amazing sort of Ghanaian writers as well because I think sometimes we don't know enough about what we are all doing. We know each other but we don't know our work. So yeah. Okay. Just thinking as we're talking I'm remembering Sakari Douglas Camp who was a Nigerian artist and we had a conversation as well and she was telling me how when she was younger, she was she had this these moments when she would watch um, performances on stage that were put together by another woman. I'm trying to remember her name, but it escapes me right now. But anyway, she was saying how for her it was interesting how these director would take performances from her environment, or she said the village, you know, mm -hmm. and would put that on a stage and make that the performance. And she found it interesting how. As you're watching this outside, you know, a hen or a chicken would walk by, you know. It just was yeah. really very much in your community. Yeah. It was not uh, as fabricated as, they say, going to a, a theater building. Yeah. And that for her was very 
compelling. Yeah. Is that something that you also find interesting in terms of how you've presented at Kura Theatre Workshop? In terms of ACW. So mm -hmm. ACW is so really, 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 to be honest, I'm mm -hmm. so into stylization. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, again, that's why I'm into fantasy, that's why I'm into sci-fi, and all these, like, the making of a world. Mm -hmm. That's the allure for me. Mm -hmm. Although there is something very magical about how Africans in general, but West Africans mm -hmm. in particular, how performative we are. Mm -hmm. We're all performers. We're naturally performative. There's a guy, we're sitting in a car right now, there's a guy riding down the street on his bicycle. Mm -hmm. The way he, like, angles himself side to side, the way, like, a market woman will just, like, joist her baby on her mm -hmm. hip. You don't get that kind of attitude. You know, elsewhere, we are stars. We're mm -hmm. superstars through and through, and that's mm -hmm. so magic for me. And something I'm interested in is, is that gestural and that, like, socialized swag like mm -hmm. really really interested in our physical and our um yeah our mm -hmm. vocal and you know the our carriage you know because it's it's uh it's it's part of our ourselves and part mm -hmm. of the stories we should be telling and, and atw is meant to be telling Ghanaian mm -hmm. stories specifically not not even just general things so that 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 was um that's important mm -hmm. to be able to capture that that mm -hmm. spirit and that energy okay is there anything else you want to share what's coming up what are you up to what's coming up uh new space mm -hmm. working on my own studio which is really nice it's called it's something i'm calling the interstice project or mm -hmm. just this project where um which an interstice is like a small intervening space mm -hmm. basically my whole frustration with not having, not being able to develop certain projects mm -hmm. that I wanted to because I didn't have space mm -hmm. or I, would, I had space that people were giving me but because, again, it's someone else's mm -hmm. space, there's a limit to how crazy or experimental you can really mm -hmm. be and to kind of alleviate that a little bit. So that's my January mode. Where is the space going to be? This is in Jorulu. Okay. So it's on my grandmother's property. Mm -hmm. um, but nice, it's like in town so it's, it's a good easy to find mm -hmm. locations that we've we've had a few programs there as well i'm not okay. trying to go too crazy with the program so i do want it to feel very like a supportive environment very chill kind of zone where mm -hmm. people can just go and experience what other people are working on wait are you talking about the children's park it's up from there not oh, okay yeah not okay. not the mofra park okay yeah, up from there okay okay mm -hmm. i see what you mean i see yeah. what you mean Thank you for Good. doing this. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good job. I'm really proud of you. It's really I'm exciting proud. to I'm to, proud of you. to um after all the because you know working being in working in the arts you know yeah. in Ghana is not an easy thing to do no, and not. traditionally parents would want you to do you know the conventional things and uh, you know still want me to going do <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know so going against yeah. the grain to make your own way is it requires courage and. I remember Hans Ulrich was telling me that how he admires artists because he believes that they have tremendous courage to be able to do what they do. And I think it's um it's remarkable to see and, and it's different and it's special. So good job. Thank I'm you. proud of you. Thank okay. you. Thanks for listening to In Studio with Sharna Bovi, which this week featured the edgy and unconventional Elizabeth F. Foy Sutherland. In the next episode, I talked to Zach Ove a British Trinidadian artist who has been fascinated by carnival practices and conveys this in his work. Don't forget to subscribe to get the latest updates and keep in touch with us on Instagram and Twitter. You can find us at InStudio with SO.